Agriculture employs 60% of all Ugandans and contributes 25% to the country's gross domestic product, GDP. Government policy for the last 10 years has focused on building sustainable value chains from garden to market and this is work still in progress. This has not been easy because the funding to this all-important sector has not been commensurate. Some of the inherent challenges to attracting funding, especially from the banking sector, include smallholder nature of most farmers, the unpredictable weather patterns, the largely informal nature of the sector. Seeing that the sector is this critical to the country and most household incomes, it has required the banking industry specialized approaches to by all means extend funding to agriculture despite its many associated risks. Most commercial banks or financial institutions still consider agriculture to be very risky in terms of uh, business. Uh, one, some of the reasons they give is that um, uh, farmers, mainly farmers, don't, don't have a track record of borrowing, so it becomes difficult for banks to, to, to lend them money. And um, others don't have collateral, especially the smallholder farmers. Uh, when banks come in, they lend money to, to big farmers or already established farmers. Yet the sector is dominated by smallholder farmers. The banking sector has disbursed over 2 trillion shillings to agriculture and about 25% of this by Stambik Bank. For Stambik, navigating the risk has come with being proactive and pragmatic. And two years ago, we started our EERF program, the Economic Enterprise Restart Fund. In this fund, we get, uh, we collect, uh, it's a special purpose for where we collect a lot of funding at very, very low rates. Uh, and we, we, we provide this funding to the farmers in that category. To do it one by one would not be feasible because they're in the millions. So what we have done instead is to partner with the circles that are closest to them. So anywhere in this country where you have a group of farmers who have come together and who are organizing themselves into an economic enterprise, Stanbic will be there to support them. For example, in Masaka, one of the circles that has accessed Stanbic Bank Agriculture funding is Cabonero Coffee Farmers Cooperative. Claudia is a member of the Cabonero Coffee Farmers Cooperative and through the Cabonero Coffee Farmers SACO, she accessed funding from Stambik Bank. I was Cooperative. How I have benefited from Stambik and Cabonero Cooperative? Stanbic gave money to Cabonero Cooperative to help them buy for us fertilizers. Then they gave them to us on credit. After planting and harvesting coffee from our gardens, we then pay them. Stanbic Bank gave us 40 million shillings without any security. We were all shocked and surprised, but it was a timely blessing. The Cabonero Coffee Farmers Cooperative has annual turnover of 800 million in coffee harvests, yet despite this, many banks shared away from them. Sackers receive funding from Stambik at an interest of 10% per annum. Partnerships have been important for Stambik's quest to find innovative ways to fund agriculture and the bank has worked with ABI, IFAD and Operation Wealth Creation among others. Digitizing SACOs through adopting technology has found very practical applications for SACOs. Compared to, 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 to earlier days where a farmer used to move, say from here to, to the Antone, to pick his money from his account. Now, a farmer can uh, withdraw money from his account to his mobile money and withdraw it from the nearest, the nearest uh, mobile money agent. Stambik has recruited and trained agriculture-specific staff 
to help create a vibrant ecosystem by which more funding can find its way into agriculture. We want to train these circles so that they can be, they can be run well. Once they are run well and they become like mini standbigs at a village level, hmm? they are able to service those people uh, in a much more meaningful way and to intervene in spaces where we are not.